So I've got this one of these cheap Chinese reflow ovens. It's called the T962, and if you Google for that, you get 10,000 hits. You can buy them for a few hundred bucks. And uh, making it work has been a learning process. And I just wanted to give you like the, the four minutes compressed version. Um, this is what you're supposed to do to do a proper reflow uh, uh, soldering process. You're supposed to basically arrange for the PCB temperature, the temperature of the components, namely the solder joint itself, to follow this uh, pattern of temperatures to uh, for uh, radiant type heating like this cheap Chinese oven uses where you maintain a soak zone and a peak temperature and the solder actually melts and solders right in here, right in, in these temperatures. This is what you're supposed to do. And um, after many uh, interesting experiments with, uh, with Chip, wondering what on earth was going on, um, we bought some thermocouples, hooked them up with uh, Adafruit uh, uh, thermocouple amplifiers and wired them into something to, to capture the temperatures. This is the inside of the oven drawer. This is a stainless steel drawer. And these are PC boards, and this, these are the positions of the thermocouples. And this is the temperature that we measured of what the oven did when it was being told to do the standard lead type solder paste soldering profile. Well, here's that Kester profile. Hmm. This is what it's supposed to do, and this is what it actually does. And uh, there was a lot of head scratching. And as part of this, I borrowed uh, Jane's uh, flute, actually, before I'm getting ahead of myself, before we got the four thermocouples and wired them up, I borrowed Jane's uh, killer uh, flute meter and uh, did some measurements. And I found it very convenient to photograph the oven to, to, to then leisurely go back and just slide the playback back and forth. All right, and I'm going to stop it right here. And I don't know if you can read that, but that says 20. <laughs> the oven's reckoning of time is off by a factor of one and a half. Mine too. Temperature drift. But, and Gene has the larger size, and it's 1.6. So the oven thinks that 10 seconds have passed when, in fact, either 15 or 16 seconds have passed. Well, those are Chinese seconds. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> there have been all kinds of speculations. Like, you know, they got a real good deal on a different crystal for the microcontroller. So the whole stupid thing is running like in two, either two thirds or one and a half. Uh, so that was a clue. And so basically, over a long series of, uh, I eventually uh, did a whole bunch of jiggering and figured out the correction factor to tell the oven, oh yes, of course, you know, spend the next 10 seconds getting to uh, 60 degrees when in fact I knew that it was going to be 15 seconds in the case of my oven. And by doing that, we were finally able to actually get some real performance. But the other basic thing with these things is that the thermocouples that are connected to the pit controller, uh, it's, it's measuring the air temperature. And the air uh, uh, responds to the heat very, very differently than the PC board temperature. So I don't know how well you can see it. I don't know. Let's see. I might be able to blow this up a little bit. This light blue 
is the air temperature. So there's a thermocouple that we have set up measuring the temperature of the air. And these red and green, that's the PC board surface temperature in two different positions on the PC board. So as you can see, the air is, is radically heated when the, when the uh, heating element comes on, it just yanks the air temperature up. The response of the PC board is slower and the whole thing is uh, uh, quite a bit behind uh, and starts to kind of relate down here. Right here, the, uh, the fan is blowing on the PC that's circulating air as hard as it can and the fan is turning on and off and that's causing the air temperature to jump up and down. Meanwhile, the PC board temperature is, 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 is going differently. This is the original profile that the oven ships with. And this is the profile that I've come up with that gives you something that actually tracks the recommended tester profile. So you get the soak zone and you get uh, rapid rise, but not too rapid, and uh, the rapid cool down. The black dashes is air? Uh, in this graph, okay, there are two different graphs here. Uh, right. This this is the uh, the dumb, uh, the, the Chinese profile right. that the tricks you, right. and then over here the air temperature is black. Okay. The Kester profile uh, suggested uh, is, is the, uh, the uh, little round dots, and then the purple and yellow are the PC board surface temperature. Okay? Cool. And so it's possible to trick the oven into doing the right thing, and then the last part of it is it will do the right thing for small portions of the drawer. Oh, jeez. Really <laughs> crappy for doing a large area uh, board. It isn't clear. We we haven't uh, characterized the performance across the large surface area at this point. Um, with the original Chinese profile, how did your parts come out? Like how resistant? Like crap. Or? They okay. they, they, <laughs> uh, uh, they okay. And, and and here's here's why. Okay, it turns out that if you spend this much time getting hot, all of the flux boils away uh -huh. before the solder melts. So the solder is Pardon, melting Pardon. and you've got no flux and the results are um, uh, un unsatisfactory. Yeah, I don't think it made it down that way. Thanks. Yeah. What was the time scale? Oh, um, put it back. That's, that's a good point. The standard, the way the oven comes from the factory, it takes uh, like, um, oh, well, at the point where it's starting to cool down is, is about uh, seven minutes. When it's done, done correctly, the whole cycle at the point where it's, it's cooling down uh, is less than three minutes. Does, does it have, how does it cool it down? Is it active? It has a big fan and uh, my, um, if I could get my internet running. My, uh, my, toaster oven, my toaster oven stays hot forever, so I would, I would just wait to the right moment to just pull the, pull the door. <laughs> you know. Yes. Yeah. And, and that, that's another thing. I mean, this is a great example of how you can solder, you can do surface mount, and you can get results even with wildly wrong parameters which is why you can surface mount on a frying pan uh, and so on. And the reason that I've gone with what I thought was a real oven <laughs> um, is for, uh, to, to, to arrange, you know, to have a process that's repeatable, that's, that's predictable, and where I can, can get results out. And I don't have, it doesn't boil down to Oh, my mind wandered for 10 seconds, and I've just fried this $25 QFN chip. 
the Kester profile, is that spec'd as board temp or is that spec'd as ambient it's, it's around the board? It, it, it's the, it's the, uh, solder. It's the it's, solder joint temp. It is the it's, joint it's, temp. It, well, yeah, it's, it, the whole idea with, with, with the oven, I mean with the reflow oven, is that you're taking the, the board and its components up and down together. And so when the, when the board and the components sitting on the board hit a certain zone, then that solder paste that's in between is going to uh, become liquid. And in theory, the flux is going to have the surfaces all nice and clean. And wet as, and as it happens. How would you um, uh, affix or attach the, the thermocouple probes to get an accurate measurement of the PCB temperature? Did you just put them really close to it, or did you physically attach it? Uh, what I did was I um, I did do some experiments with super glue, mm. and uh, but generally uh, the thermocouple beads are a fiberglass insulate fiberglass over high temperature plastic insulation of some sort, and basically it's just threaded through held on held down with Kapton tape, and then the last little bit of the wire is like that and I bend it down and then okay. pull it up where it's got some tension and put it right on a pad or a, uh, a via, a, 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 a small hole or a pad that's, that's basically a piece of the uh, <coughs> surface that's, that, would, that would be soldered if it had solder base on it. And in fact, this probe popped off Notice the note. Uh, this guy was working, and then somehow the temperature changes caused this this probe to jump off of the surface of the board, and so now it's measuring the air temperature, which is falling much faster than the, the seaboard. And that turns out the the whole placement of the probes on the surface of the board turns out to be a real pain in the neck problem. That's that could do with a good board. solution. Yeah. yeah. So, where our Chip and I are kind of conspiring on this kind of stuff, and, and, and we're, we're thinking real hard now about convection yeah. heating rather than radiant heating, uh, where the probe temperature that's measuring the air is, is in fact tracking, more closely tracking the PC board because of the air movement and, and kind of. Uh, mixing of the different temperature there. One last quick question. Uh, I know you got a good deal on this oven. <clears throat> would you do it this way over again, or would you I, say, I would, I would take a this pistol and, and shoot one of my own toes off before I, <laughs> before I use that oven again from scratch. But uh, I, you passed a board, I passed a board around last month. That I've done. I mean, we are getting very, very good results out of it now. But I should mention that there's more to, to the surface mount soldering than the oven. Um, turns out that the geometry, the design of your component pads, the, the footprint. So if, if, if you're doing a chip and there's no eagle file for it, so you have to make your own. There's more to that than meets the eye. It turns out that, that there's subtleties to do with that, that that directly translate into joy or sadness as far as the soldering goes. So and there's the application of the solder paste and the the, the whole pasting. Yeah, we could talk about that. Uh, that's that's pretty funny. And if something does develop terms of meetings at Splat Space, one of the wonderful aspects of that is that we could paste some, you know, we could squeegee solder paste and maybe even run the oven if they ever get any ventilation set up um, and, and actually see that at work, but we're not allowed to, to do that kind of thing here. How much does a really good oven cost? Twelve hundred dollars. The Chinese one was like, well, I traded a 
part of a linear amplifier for it, so I didn't think anything. But about 250 for the little one, and the big one is 420. 420. And, uh, you know, so you don't, I mean, the trick is to get good results out of an alternative, like a, like, you know, a re revamped toaster oven or something. Is, is hard. That, that, that turns out to be hard. Well, it sounds to me like, I mean, John, you say you've made your own toaster yeah. oven reflow, but so you're having the same problems that Pete is having. I, I was, my goal was different than Pete's. I, I just wanted to get it done, sort of. I wasn't looking for a, you know, high, or I guess not high volume. You know, I, I, I'm doing prototyping. Get it done once? Yeah, I mean, yeah. sort of one off prototyping. So I, I have a lot more tolerance for. I, I'm just I'm just thinking that we assume that we have a like a four hundred dollar starting point with this Chinese oven. You have a thirty dollar starting point with your wife's old toaster oven. Um, it was a Christmas gift, so it wasn't even. That. Yeah. There's so, a difference between okay. two, which is the thirty nine dollar toaster oven with the hundred dollar brain transplant that you can get and. I mean, it's tempting. It's right now, right? But but you don't even have. To, okay, the other night, just for fun, yeah. I got an electric skillet that I completely forgot about that we had had in our under our uh, stairs for when the hurricanes trapped us in our house for a week at a time or something. I'm not. I swear, I'm telling you the truth. I got this skillet out, put a PC board on it, stuck a thermocouple lead on it. Mm -hmm. And watched the temperature. I have a thing <laughs> and, manually and I turned the thing on and off, and I got closer close enough where I would have successfully soldered that board. <laughs> that's, funny. that's what you can do. I mean, you, you know, it, it it doesn't have to be as hard as this seems. So if you had a track with a hot plate, you might be able to get your desktop profile. Yeah. It, it, with 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 a trivial uh, a PID controller. And a solid state relay or you know triac circuit or something and a thermocouple. That does sound you more could, repeatable. You, you, <laughs> you, you can get results. I mean you get results. I've made three boards with a hot plate. One's in my so, coat. <laughs> yeah, I mean but but if you've got hot air tools and you know how to use hot air tools, that's a whole alternative. Mm -hmm. um, there are alternatives to using solder paste. You 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 can tin the component pads and tin the PC board, put sticky flux on it, stick the parts on, raise the whole temperature.